I think that some people approach digital transformation as digitizing everything a business does. And then you have the more, the companies who are more willing to be disrupted. And, and I think they're in more of an advantageous position because they might be kind of, you know, stuck in the dark ages, but if they're up for some disruption, then they can kind of leapfrog over what people are doing and do something really groundbreaking and, and different and really kind of break the mold. So sometimes, not having made any progress towards digitization can actually be a, a positive thing. And then you can suddenly rewrite your whole business model. How do we work? And it's much easier then to kind of just unpick it and start with a blank sheet of paper and then working towards it incrementally. And as long as you know where you're trying to get to, although I think when you've got where you intended, then the world around you has changed, or you can go for something really disruptive. But I think that's quite a, a, brave, <laughs> a yes. brave thing for a big corporate to do, but some of them, some of them are up for it, typically working with startups, so big corporates coupling with the, the startups to see what's out there for them. So I've been working in, in corporate real estate for the last few years, um, and JLL definitely. Yeah. And they work with, with, with venture capitalists and um, startups. The same for Seagro, same for CBRE, where they're actually forming partnerships with the startups. So I think what some of the bigger corporates have learned is that rather than try and innovate and disrupt with the team that they have, to actually harness the energy that's out there with the startups and to form partnerships with them and almost bring them in-house to help energise their strategy and their approach. I think that the creative sector is naturally more aligned because they're already in that space where they're ideating and creating and coming up with new stuff and challenging the norm so they're kind of naturally there and that's probably why all of the digital marketing and is, is kind of pretty far forward my my view is it's down to leadership so you need one person who's brave enough or stupid <laughs> <laughs> enough. Okay, yeah. uh, to take a calculated risk often a risk with a calculated risk to try something different because I think a lot of the time companies want to do something first and then they put a lot of focus into doing what everyone else is already doing and to do something first to be a to, to be a first mover or market leader means you have to think of and do something before anyone else is there is no precedent so that's kind of a scary space you need a brave leader to be willing to go there you need to be willing to fail and you need to be willing to learn and understand what your failures are and how to turn them into successes or how to reshape what you're trying to achieve and how you're achieving it. So here's another analogy. You, you go to a hotel, a great hotel, has a great concierge, and can you ever imagine not asking the concierge for their advice or their help or leveraging that concierge's contacts or knowledge but probably a lot of what the concierge does you could you could digitize or you could you know put it in an app but there's something about that specific person that you can't bottle and for me it's finding the thing that you can't bottle and if you give them an environment where there's very little space for them to operate so this is your job this is your job this is your job so the traditional functions then you're instantly creating friction and, and very often technology and digital transformation cuts across function. So if you can find a way of uh, galvanizing teams, cutting through those silos, and, and that can come down to the, the, the good old traditional, what are people paid for, how are they recognized, what do they get their bonuses for. A lot of the time we focus on what people do and how to reward them. But sometimes people to protect themselves or their, their perceived part of the organisation will not support um, a piece of work and they're not actively scuppering it but they're just not actively going out of their way to make it a success. And it's that thing about the organisation's goals being the individual's goals as well. And it, it, it's never about the people, it's actually about, about the culture what's the requirement, let's nail the requirements, let's deliver those requirements, rather than having a, what are we actually trying to achieve? If we're trying to get a competitive edge, how do we define that? And putting broader measures around it and aiming for an outcome rather than following a process and that you can turn into a business as usual exercise because ultimately it needs to be repeatable and you need to be able to put people behind it to deliver it or to create it. Um, 
So it's taking the crazy idea, testing it, refining it until you have something that you know you can put to market and then bringing it back in house with the teams that you have and then turning it into something that actually becomes a commodity ultimately. So I have connections with the VCs and then they connect you with the startups who are looking connections with the corporates and then working out how the two can marry together um, because the, the, the VCs have done a lot of the hard work in working out where they think the talent is and then it's working out how to use that talent and match it with a corporate. So that's one way and I think the other way is just to just to remember or be very aware and conscious of what's outside of the corporate. So always thinking, you know, the way you live your life day to day, the way your life, the way you live your life evolves is mirrored in the corporate world, but the corporate world is probably, I don't know, five, ten years behind.